So. Yeah. Uh, yes, uh, I'm from the Artist Collective, I would call it, uh, rather than an in initiative. I think initiative is a little bit too uh, structured for what we really are. Um, uh, we have uh, haben and brauchen, um, or to have and to need in English, um, has um, founded itself uh, on the spot, uh, like in 2010, when in Berlin uh, the the mayor of Berlin City decided that he wants to have a Leistungsschau uh, for the young art uh, scene of Berlin, uh, and. Um, there was uh, many, many, many reasons to be um, opposing this concept um, of um, the major Wobereit. Um, because once uh, of the name, like Leistungsschau, it was uh, really like it uh, should be a show of the, the oh, now I forgot the translation Leistung. again. Leistung. Leistung. Achievement. Achievement. But yeah, but it's really like Leistungsschau in German language. Uh, Leistung is uh, connected to sports. So if you have professional cow sports. Huh? To present the best cow. The best yes, cow? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, the best cow, yeah. yeah. And cows. So Leistung. <laughs> and then it also has, then it also has a very uh, strong uh, connection somehow, at least for most of uh, like, for, yeah, for my ears, it also really uh, uh, um, it <coughs> revokes images of Nazi Germany a little bit. I don't know why, but somehow this whole thing about Leistung, it's uh, something very, very uh, to oppose. So it's like just the, the, the name of it, it's, it's, it was strange. And then, of course, uh, the major of Berlin, even though he says he is uh, very much um, for the arts, he doesn't really communicate much with the art scene. So this whole concept was sort of like uh, decided upon uh, um, with him and uh, a very close friend of his <laughs> who's running, or uh, used to be running the Kunstwerke uh, like on a bottle of beer or two, or like maybe a bottle of wine. <laughs> and nobody was really informed about it. And um, Berlin, even though it's famous in whole um, German, uh, like um, for being a creative and artist-friendly um, city, and uh, been famous especially for the good living conditions and good working conditions, uh, which is, which are not really uh, initiated by the Senat, but which, uh, which just historically evolved. Um, doesn't really do much for the art scene itself, and it does have lots of problems with um, underfunded institutions um, and, and let's say like very, very little art funding for the amount of uh, artists in the city and um, as I said in the beginning, no communication with the polit in between the politics and the art um, scene, so to speak. Um, and so what happened was with this inauguration of this Leistungsschau, which was also based on a concept of everybody, all the artists of Berlin should hand in their portfolios and then they will be selected, uh, the best ones will be selected mm -hmm. by a young curational team, which also is, uh, sounded all quite nice. And they get paid. And they, they get, no, 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 that was no pay for the artist in the beginning. No, the curation team. Yeah, the curation yeah. team, yeah. yes. <laughs> there was, um, and also uh, there was an, a huge amount of money which was uh, suddenly available to, to uh, make that exhibition, um, which was uh, coming in from Lotto. And so uh, I, I don't know, just, it's just all, everybody in the city who was working in the art scene for years and years and years and always been underfunded, they, we all came together and said, can't be true that they will like spend now a million on this show, which has no connection to us or to the, to the people working in the art world. <coughs> and um, so um, that can't, uh, we can't let that happen. So um, this is, I think, a picture, I'm sorry, it's anonymized, <laughs> anonymized <laughs> by the pixels. <laughs> <laughs> We're all working on a cover. <laughs> um, I think it's one of the first meetings um, 
uh, we, we used to meet in different um, spaces and it, it's, um, it really brought the whole art uh, scene together in the beginning and we all started to debate about uh, the concepts of um, what can we do and how should we what can we do and what are exactly the problems? I think it was like, maybe there have been like times before that, but uh, this was really like, I think the first time in, from, uh, from my recognition when really people started to talk about precarious working conditions and um, how uh, the, the money um, went to the wrong, uh, for, uh, was, give, uh, was spent on, on wrong issues. And, and it suddenly there was this, uh, communication in between uh, curators, artists, institutions, architects, planners, and, and everybody else involved in the in the artistic or in the cultural scheme of the city, and it was really like an, a big start. And then um, we were holding, I think, like four or five of these huge meetings. And from that, uh, they developed a, a very many other initiatives. So it all um, split up a little bit. And I, I, it, it's since then it's been like a very um, active discussion on on um, cultural politics in Berlin. Um, and I, I think it's especially. I mean, I think there has been cultural politics uh, discussions all the time along, but maybe not in such a big, in a big group, mm -hmm. and, and not on a big level. So um, I just brought some pictures um, from um, a couple of those meetings. One is also in the in the in this book in here, where we yes, <clears throat> and um, actually, what uh, what Haben and Brauchen uh, so far has accomplished uh, by simply meeting, and I think there was one open letter produced which was signed by many people, and then we um, wrote this manifesto um, collectively. Um, and we just talked with each, uh, with, with each other, and suddenly things started to move. So um, I'm very, it's, it's uh, quite uh, enormous feedback. So I um, have been Brauchen just with criticizing the enormous sums spent for the exhibition. Uh, and criticizing the title, of course. Um, the title was changed of the exhibition. It was then called Based in Berlin. And um, the artists were paid suddenly. They, and they, they had some budget left for to pay artists wages, maybe like 500 euros, but better than nothing. And, <laughs> and um, in the next year, they didn't initiate again the, Jesus, this big <coughs> exhibition, because I mean, Berlin already has a biennial Diagonal. So I mean, it doesn't really make sense to make like a con another one just which is run by the major of the city or whatever. So, but now it's like they have this new concept of Art Week, uh, where the the money which was usually uh, which used to be spent for this based in Berlin or for the Leistungsschau is now um, given to all the art institutions which are currently underfunded in Berlin, and they. Uh, supposed to be co cooperate on one uh, big uh, scheme. So this is all, came all out of this um, initiative discussions between the parties. Um, so um, what it is uh, today, uh, just the big jump now, is um, we have been uh, invited by the Senat uh, to um, Finally, after 25 years, I think people have been trying to, to initiate that for 25 years. Finally, the Berlin Senate invited the art scene to come to a big meeting and um, the, listen to us or listen what the, the free scene has to say. So um, this is a picture now um, uh, where we are preparing uh, for that um, invitation by the Zenat. Uh, let's say, I have, to, I have to specify, it's not the Zenat which did the invitation, but the cultural governance, the cultural department. department. So it's the Verwaltung, what's the name? Administration. Uh, the administration of Berlin. The Zenat would be the parliament, so, but we, 
we were invited by the administration of Berlin um, to uh, talk about the issues we had. Um, this took part, uh, place last week, Thursday, Friday. This is uh, two weeks ago um, where we were, we were sort of like communicating and uh, within the different um, initiatives which has formed how we should present ourselves on this um, uh, dialogue invitation by the administration, the cultural administration. I just show some, quickly show some pictures. And that's um, to say, in Berlin, this was is one of the major issues in Berlin <coughs> is that uh, Berlin is selling um, the, the grounds and, and the, the basis for <coughs> cultural working, um, cultural work is actually diminishing by Second in seconds, they have been uh, they have uh, they have initiated a law because of the Berlin Bank scandal, which is like ten years ago, that they that they are um, have to sell their uh, properties, which they don't which are not needed anymore by the Berlin Senate or by the Berlin administrations, and they have to sell it to the person who is um, giving the most money for it. So the highest price, they have to sell it for the highest price and they can't say, okay, we take the bidder which is not being able to pay that um, uh, outrageous price but maybe has a good benefit for the neighborhood. They simply can't, there's a law against that. So they have to always have to take the highest bidder. Uh, which of course leads to uh, very strange situations like for example um, since Berlin used to own a lot of properties and it was sold after the war came down to private investors now we have the situation of like a small theater somewhere in Prenzlauer Berg they actually got state funding uh, infrastructure funding which is not easy to get I mean Berlin is not that rich but they got it and but the problem is <laughs> 95% of that is uh, spent for the rent, which is then going to a private landlord. So there are many of these kind of problems, like Berlin keeps selling uh, the property, but then they, it doesn't really benefit Berlin in the end, because then the money is spent uh, for the rent, uh, or paid the rent to some private investors. There's other issues with um, the social housing in Berlin as is, is well, um, where they have stopped paying the rents, uh, the, the social um, welfare rents for, for the house um, owners, to the house owners. So now the house owners try to get uh, the rent they usually were getting like subsidized by the Berlin Senate directly from the renters, which is <laughs> Like an, an, an uh, partly really extremely overpriced. So now they, the the people living in these social welfare houses, which look like social welfare houses, and also kept them shaped like welfare houses, now pay like a price of 15 euros a square meter, which is like really <laughs> outrageous for Berlin. <laughs> and, and the landlords can actually pay. Um, they they can actually. Um, sum up the costs they have for the house to uh, make the, uh, to, to um, come to the sum they, they ask for rent. So what is happening is that somebody is buying a house and then he puts the uh, interest on the credit he took to buy the house in his uh, bill of costs for the rent. So then he says, yeah, I'm, uh, my cost to, to, for this house is Blah, 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 and I'm and including the uh, the interest he pays to the bank just to be able to buy it, um, he will charge in the end the renters for, to pay back his um, credit. It's just, uh, I think I mean it's like a very legal process um, apparently, but it's somehow when you look at this, it's really it's absurd. I mean it's like what is this? And this is all like done by the legislation. Uh, uh, which is the reason why we are actually trying to speak with the politics and we are really addressing <coughs> the politics mainly. Haben and Brahman is really targeted to t talk to the politics because we think that this, this kind of misunderstanding um, of or misuse of um, private um, 
and um, public funds um, should be directed uh, in a better way by politics. And we still believe, or especially I still believe, that political um, decisions are made by the politicians, really. I mean, it's like <laughs> not by the free market. I, I, I still believe that um, there are some decision makers sitting in the, in the Senat which we can address and convince that this is not the, the way it should be. So um, another big issue for Haben and Brauchen in the moment and also for the whole uh, culture scene in Berlin is the inauguration of the city tax, uh, which um, we all believe should rather be called culture um, tax than city tax, because uh, with the name city tax we now, um, I, I don't know, um, do you all know what city tax is? City tax um, is the idea of um, charging the tourists which are flocking to Berlin because we have this nice um, cultural scene or whatever reasons for it. Um, so we have, uh, Berlin has really, really gotten an immense amount of tourist, tourism in the past years. It's really crazy. When I've been living in Berlin for I don't know how many years and it's really, I, I, I'm sometimes really amazed like you feel like in Rome and, and, and it's like, uh, all these tourists suddenly um, blocking my ways, <laughs> annoyingly. <laughs> um, so yeah, Berlin has actually topped Rome in uh, last year um, in the amount of tourists uh, who visit the city. And um, according to the um, let's say, uh, IHK, and uh, to, to the tourism organizations like Visit Berlin, um, a major amount of this tourism um, is um, because of the cultural scene. So um, 70 to 80 percent of uh, the Berlin visitors visit Berlin because of this vivid cultural scene. And um, I, I, I suppose, or we suppose, that it's not only the museums which, is, uh, which are the most attractive points for the tourism, but also, and especially be so, because <coughs> I've been like, very active in the club culture like some years, um, I would also say that the music scene is something which is attracting tourism. From my own experience, I can say that most of the Berlin-based electronic music clubs live by uh, the tourism uh, coming in through EasyJet, and we have all these uh, matching hostels um, opening in Berlin. So it's like not all of the. Uh, I think a bigger part of the tourists coming to Berlin, they really come for the free art scene or free music scene, so to speak, or let's say free culture scene of Berlin. And this is also what Berlin is famous for. However, um, <clears throat> since uh, this idea of um, charging the tourists uh, for uh, uh, a special tax uh, to support uh, the city of Berlin uh, because uh, you know they come and visit it and so why shouldn't they pay like maybe two euros a night it's just another tax <laughs> um, since it's called city tax it's not so obvious in the moment that it might uh, that it will go into uh, stabilizing the cultural scene of Berlin but maybe, go to some other parties. So uh, what we are working on right now and in collaboration with other um, cultural institution is that uh, we want to make like a proposition or a public um, standing uh, and find argumentations why it is important for Berlin uh, to support the cultural scene and the city tax could bring a lot of, or uh, will bring a lot of money in the city and we should find a way to make a political decision that it will be used to um, help the art world scene, the free art scene as it is now to survive. Because with rising rents and rising living expenses, it's becoming very, very hard to keep up the free um, practice um, Berlin is famous for, or many people in Berlin are used to do, like, as a, used to work like. So that, that somehow, um, yeah, that's the claim of um, Haben and Brauchen and many others um, trying to um, get money in the free scene and trying to change the political decisions. So this is another picture of the meeting we had when we debated how we should um, um, react 
to the um, invitation medicine not. This is um, yeah. This is uh, some. This is the program done by the Senate. I won't go into the detail. We had really like a, a strong discussion if we should go or should, if we should not go. Especially by this, <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I should translate it. The Senate. I mean, they had a little bit like a strange way to um, invite us. So they had this really strange questions they want to discuss, and then, and then they gave it this title: "Dear politician, please paint me." dot, 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 and we should discuss this uh, question. And so, so like, we were really not quite sure what we should do. Um, um, it went from boycott to um, mm -hmm. making a critical press release to everything like that. Uh, this is uh, pictures, um, which is uh, also we are, uh, using in a manifest. This by Eric Göngrich, an artist. He's been protocoling most of our meetings. Um, oh, yeah. And um, this is... Um, Somehow, um, I, I, I'd say it's a really nice um, way of, of reading through the, through the general meetings we had. It's like a visual recording called, I think, in the, in the other scenes. I think there's one in here, too. Oh, in this, um, in the huge one. Yeah, this, this all of the noise also in the, in the background, yes. Mm. Um, so. You can try it. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> Um, so, I'm sorry, uh, my English is somehow a little bit uh, gotten bad in the last years. <laughs> I've been trying to somehow like this. Um, but anyway, so, um, Haben und Brauchen is a uh, collective or let's, uh, by um, artists and creators, and we mainly focus on uh, issues inside the art scene, but we also do have relations to uh, rent um, people. Um, one of the main issues um, is um, artist wages um, for Haben und Brauchen. There's a big group in Haben und Brauchen who's working on that. Um, it's, I think it's a very special German uh, case, but I don't know, I would be interested to hear from the other countries um, here, or people from the other countries in Germany. Uh, artists are not paid when they have an exhibition in a museum, even though all the other um, people involved in preparing the exhibition uh, are paid. So I have this really strange, this, uh, there's this really strange stories happening, like a very successful artist friend couple of mine who are exhibiting worldwide in, in many shows, then they always have to ask for um, do we get paid and how much do we get paid because it's not like a general procedure, okay, there's no minimum wage for, for artist uh, fees for exhibitions, so you always have to ask. If you're a little bit more successful, then it's easier because they really want you. If you're not so successful, then you maybe fail, but um, if they're nice, they give you money. Um, and you get really strange responses when you ask for, for a wage, so it's like... Um, they told me one story which was really unbelievable and the, the curator of the museum wrote back to them on their question if they get a wage or if they get some reimbursement for sending in the video. They sa he said, yes, well, the technician who's setting up your video is already costing me 1,500 euros. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry, we can't pay you. And I, I, I don't know, I'm not sure if they actually wrote back, but, but I think they were thinking about writing back here why it, and then let the technician show his own video. You know, it's like, <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's like, uh, so it's, it's really um, an issue. And in Berlin, for example, it's uh, the, the, the Stiftung Preußischer Kulturbesitz, and they have in their um, declaration, or let's say, what's the name of uh, Statuten? Status. Status. They, they have written that they are not able, that they can't pay artist uh, wages for the exhibition, apparently. So, funny things like they can only pay an Aufwandsentschädigung, which is something different. So, then there's funny things happening. Like another friend of mine, she has been in a show at uh, Rigshallen in, in Hamburger Bahnhof, and um, uh, they paid um, 20,000 euros to, uh, for setting up the piece for all the materials and people involved working it, but uh, she, she was working like three months 
full time on this piece and she got paid like 500 euros Aufwandsentschädigung, something like and, and, and then they say, yeah, but you can, uh, it's your piece in the end, and we invest it, and, and you know, you can sell it for a triple the price, but in the end it done, doesn't work because it's a huge, huge thing. So first thing would be, they ha she would have to set it, uh, take it apart, and then she would have to put it in a storage space until maybe some collector will buy this enormous thing, which was uh, conceptualized especially for this exhibition, and. And I mean, it's a very nice sculpture, but it's like, uh, you, it's not that easy to sell something on a free market, especially, and it's, um, in the end, I mean, it's really like um, setting, um, bring, giving the whole risk of, of uh, the creating the art piece to the artist, and uh, who's the weakest person in the whole uh, battle uh, around the art. So it's like giving her the responsibility to sell the piece. Mm -hmm. And um, being uh, like that's how it always works, you know. We invite you for this really nice exhibition, but um, but we have um, we will not pay you, but uh, your value of your piece will rise. And, and in the end, I mean, the same artist she now sold actually some some drawings which is through her gallery, but then the gallerist doesn't pay her the share. So it's like always coming down to the artist. It's always the artist who is like standing there, okay, and where is my money? What do I make in this? And he's surrounded by all these people who are actually making a good living on, on in the cultural hemisphere. And they say, yeah, well, we have so little funding, we can't pay the art artists, but uh, we have to make 20 shows a year. So it's like really, <laughs> so this is uh, one major issue. And the other major issue for Haben and Brauchen is this concept of participation. That we do think uh, the artist has given lots of input uh, for the rise, uh, economic rise of the city of Berlin. But we are, we are the first ones who have to move out when the, when the um, rents rise. So uh, these are the two things. And um, the, maybe a little bit easier to target a thing is we want at least free entries to the exhibitions. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and we don't want to be used and, um, as advertisement for uh, free labor. That's, um, that's also a big issue which is a little bit more um, described in detail in, within this manifest, where you also have it in here, parts of it. Um, that we are very um, aware of the fact that the artist has been used as figure for uh, the neoliberal workforce. So the artist, uh, the creative person who is working on their own, um, for their own fulfillment, but n doesn't need money for it. So the artist is a very good symbol for that. And yes, you can become very rich if you're working on your own um, schedules. Um, maybe three or four percent of the artists really do become very rich. Um, so um, we would, I would, I would, for that I would really um, like to steal the claim of um, uh, another group in Hamburg which is called Not In Our Name, which is uh, based mm -hmm. on musicians. Um, Haben and Brauchen is saying the same. We actually have it cited in, in the manifest that we don't want I mean, we appreciate that we are used for um, advertising for Berlin, but we don't want to be used for advertising for uh, free labor and, and de degenerating uh, working um, uh, rights, workers' rights. And um, if we are used for advertising for the city, then we also want to participate in the benefits we bring, obviously. I mean, I've been personally asked by an landlord if I don't want to move in his house and bring all these artists in so that he can sell it in the end for a bigger price. I mean, it was really like, and I said, yeah, if you pay me, <laughs> what do I get for that? <laughs> Not so <of> work. <laughs> so, I mean, this is really, um, it's been ridiculous um, how little the, uh, we get back for the work we do in the art scene. And we want free entry to the exhibitions. <laughs> <laughs>